Hey, this is Presh Talwalkar. This puzzle consists of two parts. First, how many rectangles are there in this grid? Second, how many rectangles are there in this grid? These two challenges were asked on the TV show Superhuman hosted by Cal Penn. The contestant Summer was able to answer each challenge in about 10 seconds each. Given the number of possibilities, it would seem you would have to be a savant to count all of these rectangles that quickly. But in fact, any human can solve these problems with the superpower of mathematics. In this video, I will teach you a trick to solve these problems. Can you figure them out? Give these problems a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. Let me first go over the answers. In the first problem, there are 675 rectangles in this grid. For the second problem, there are 900 rectangles in this grid. So how can we count all of these rectangles? If you start out with the first problem and you try and count manually, you'll quickly see that it's impractical. It's a method that's prone to error and it will take a long time. So we need to come up with a more systematic way of counting the number of rectangles. The key insight is that every rectangle can be uniquely described by the two distinct horizontal lines and two distinct vertical lines that bound the rectangle. So let me draw a rectangle in this grid and you'll notice that this rectangle is bound by two different horizontal lines and two different vertical lines. Now we could take this insight in reverse as well. Every pair of two distinct horizontal lines and two distinct vertical lines will uniquely define a rectangle. If we take another pair of horizontal lines and vertical lines, this will also bound a rectangle. And this will be true of every single pair of horizontal lines and every single pair of vertical lines. So we can put these insights together to say that we can count all of the rectangles by counting the number of ways to pick two distinct horizontal lines and two distinct vertical lines. As shorthand, I'll say that two distinct horizontal lines plus two distinct vertical lines count a rectangle. So now the problem reduces to how many ways can we pick two distinct horizontal lines and two distinct vertical lines. To do that, we'll first count the number of horizontal lines in this grid. There are six. Then we count the number of vertical lines in this grid, and there are 10. So we have six horizontal lines and 10 vertical lines. Now before I get to the calculation, I want to make one caveat. Some of you will be tempted to count the number of rectangles in the grid. But notice there are five rectangles in the rows and nine rectangles in the columns. So if you count the number of rectangles, make sure that you add one to count the number of lines that are in the grid. So how many different ways can we pick horizontal lines? For a pair of horizontal lines, there will be six different possibilities for the first line. Let's suppose that I pick the third line. Now how many ways are there to pick the second line? Well, as I've already picked one of these lines, there are only five possibilities that remain. So there will be five possibilities for the second line. So we can multiply six times five to get that there are 30 different ordered pairs of lines. But we are only interested in unordered pairs. So we need to divide by two. Why do we divide by two? Well, if you look at ordered pairs, the pair three and four will be the same as four, three, because they will both be representing the lines three and four. So in the ordered pairs, we basically have duplicates of every single unordered pair. So the number of unordered pairs will be 30 divided by two, which is 15. Now there's a shortcut to this. It comes up in many combinatorics problems. We can count the number of ways to pick two of the horizontal lines as a binomial coefficient six choose two which equals six times five divided by two, which equals 15 pairs of horizontal lines. 
Furthermore, we can pick the number of vertical lines in the same method. There are 10 choose 2, which equals 10 times 9 divided by 2, which equals 45 pairs of vertical lines. So now the total number of rectangles will be the total number of horizontal pairs that we can pick times the total number of vertical pairs of lines that we can pick. So this will be 15 times 45, which equals 675 rectangles. So you know the trick to solve this problem, but I still think that under pressure, counting the number of lines, calculating these binomial coefficients, and then multiplying them together is still a remarkable thing that the contestant did. Now, in order to solve any type of problem, we'll have to generalize. Let's suppose that there are h horizontal lines and v vertical lines. We'll have h choose two pairs of horizontal lines, and we'll have v choose two pairs of vertical lines. We multiply these possibilities to get h choose two times v choose two to get the total number of rectangles in a grid of h horizontal lines and v vertical lines. So now the question is, how do we solve the second problem? How many rectangles are there in this L-shaped grid? This is a trickier problem. Suppose you take two distinct horizontal lines and two distinct vertical lines. Now it's not true that every pair of horizontal lines and pair of vertical lines will bound a rectangle. As you can see in this example, these pairs do not bound a rectangle in this L-shaped grid. So we have to count a bit more carefully. What we can do is we can use our solution method from problem one and adapt it for this L-shaped grid. Now suppose we look just at this blue grid. This will be a grid just like in problem one. And in just this grid, every pair of two horizontal lines and two vertical lines will form a rectangle. This blue grid has 11 horizontal lines and 5 vertical lines. But this is just a portion of our L-shaped grid. We need to consider the rest of the grid. So how do we do that? Well, we can consider another part of the grid. In this yellow grid, every pair of two horizontal lines and two vertical lines will also form a rectangle. This yellow grid has 5 horizontal lines and 10 vertical lines. So we can put these two together to count the entire shape. But the blue and yellow grids overlap in a green grid of five by five lines. So the rectangles in this portion of the grid will be double counted. So to compensate, we then need to subtract out the rectangles just in this green grid. So it's a much more complicated process, but we can solve this problem if we go step by step. So first, we count the number of rectangles in this blue grid. This will be 11 choose 2 times 5 choose 2, which equals 550. We then count the number of rectangles in the yellow grid, which will be 5 choose 2 times 10 choose 2, and that equals 450. We finally have to count the number of rectangles in the green grid, and that'll be 5 choose 2 times 5 choose 2, which is 100. So now, let's count the number of rectangles we need to take the number of rectangles in the blue grid, add it to the number of rectangles in the yellow grid, and then subtract it from the number of rectangles in the green grid, which were double counted. So we ultimately have 550 plus 450 minus 100, and that gets to the answer of 900. So solving this problem under pressure is even more remarkable. You have to divide the shape into different grids, you have to count the number of lines in each grid, then you have to calculate all those binomial coefficients and keep track of the addition and subtraction to finally get to the correct answer of 900. Did you figure these problems out? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Press Tallwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.